This next piece is something I wrote. Uh, I, I wrote. I, I was inspired. I was in like a cafe in Bristol, and it's called Handcuffed and Blindfolded, and it's not as sexy as it sounds to be honest. But like, <laughs> basically, like the other day, I was lying on my bed, Sunday, chilling. Uh, had a window to my left and phone and iPad on my right, and the view outside was incredible. But I couldn't appreciate it because my phone kept going off. You know when it's like vibrating and shaking, making more noise than your ringtone in the first place. So like a Pavlovian dog, my ears prick and I'm pulled to the right. But this time, I decide to fight it and let that window become my screen. So with no text to be seen, it's the world that I read. And the longer I stare outside at this deep blue sky peppered with clouds floating by, coated in heavenly golden light, you know the way they do. But I realised the view became 4D and I could feel the warmth of the sun on my shins and my feet. And I spot this flock of geese flying, not flapping, just gliding, just part of the sky. And that's when I realised that 4D sun and those 4K clouds, the motion picture perfect birds were all already here. But it became clear to me that they would never appear to me until I adhere to that simple rule of living in the moment. Now the irony is, if I don't grab my iPad and write down this crap, then I run the risk of losing the thought that I'm holding. So with one eye on the sky and one eye on the tablet, I start tapping, trying to translate and reimagine this mad but simple realisation I'm having. I'm living life handcuffed and blindfolded. Or maybe I can see, but it's muffled because my eyes are moulded by these crack screens I'm holding. But the graphics are great, I'm told. But really, when I compare it to the actual planet I can see with my actual soul, I feel like I'm sold short. But then why do we settle for less? Like, when you sit in a restaurant or a cafe or a pub and you order some grub, the food arrives and we grab our phones instead of a knife and fork and take pictures as if that's what's going to fill us up. So we digest the boast instead of the Sunday roast as if the digital memory is what we chose from the menu. And it's now paramount that we disclose to strangers these presentational plates as if the business was at stake and eating out here was endangered. Filling online pages with these vogue artisan bakes. When you have a nine days out of ten, you sat at home farting because it was beans on toast that you ate. <laughs> and we're all aware. We just don't want to wake up from this dream we create with our digital makeup. But I just found out you can pay for filters. Another way to drill home that your wilted existence is better than it seems through the persistence of posting memes and gifts of kittens who seem to understand the prison we live in. Like, do you remember Grumpy Cat? <laughs> that lumpy numpty, that one internet with its apparent inability to find anything funny. But <coughs> well, we get that because desensitisation is law. Like with war or the poor or anything else that we claim to abhor, we acknowledge and ignore it. So we can whore out our lives on these handcuffs in disguise because we can't leave behind the invite to the never-ending party in our smarty phones. It's addictive. That sugar rush. It's just too much. Like when our candy crush likes that picture of us in the gym looking buff and slim, making us think it was right to see that low. But I've got to be honest though, I'm being biased and overdramatic. I'm not quite lying by exaggerating my writing sometimes. It's a one-sided tactic because sometimes when we share, we help others. Yeah. or connect with our brothers or find lifetime lovers. It's not all that rubbish. But usually, we do just smother each other in a huddle of this vanity blubber that's nothing but trouble for our mental health, as we now discover. I think humanity is reaching a new level of insanity where we all pretend to be celebrities, living out these fantasies because we can't stand to be seen as standard. How many cameras do you see in a crowd the minute someone steps out of the bounds of normality? That second nature selfie. The self-harassing paparazzi. CCTV has been replaced by a CCC me. See where I was and see what I did. I'll never play it back, but I'm going to take a vid for the snap. Even if it means I missed the actual act that attracted this crap, handcuffed and blindfolded. Or maybe I can see, but it's muffled because my eyes are moulded by these cracked screens I'm holding. But how do we pick these locks and untie these knots? Like, do we just stop and switch the phones off? That seems like a lot to ask. An impossible task. We'd be daft to think we'd last five minutes without checking something on it, innit? So then what's the limit? Like, at what point do we call it a day and just be finished with this predicament of modern day living? Is it when we finally diminish human contact and find it weird sharing a room with other people, innit? Or when touch is too much and you're considered a criminal if you ever dare to be close enough to someone to commit it? Who knows? 
I don't. And I won't pretend that I do. But I'll keep judging myself and others around me when I see them with an iPhone too. Unless, of course, they're watching me. Then it's all worthwhile and I'll keep on smiling because I'd rather find fame than truth. Thank you.